Well, good morning. morning. Welcome to Riceville Valley Community Church. I don't have any announcements, but I know at least one announcement that's out there. Jacob. Cool. So that's 6 o'clock this Wednesday. Excellent. Are there any other announcements? Happy Independence Day. A day shy. Right, well, friends, as, as we prepare to worship our hearts, let us, let us go to the Lord. Would you stand and be called to worship? Come and celebrate, people of God. Sing and shout your praise. For our God comes to us, triumphant and victorious, yet gentle and humble of heart. He comes bringing peace, offering hope and freedom to all who despair. Let's worship God together. Would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are worthy of praise. It's kind of weird, Lord, to to every week stand up and sing, stand up and make declarations. Sometimes we just sing because it's fun to sing. Sometimes we listen to music just because we love listening to music. We listen to poetry because it moves us. But what we're doing now is something completely different. We're declaring that you move us. We're declaring that you're good. We're declaring that apart from you, we can do nothing. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would fill this place, that we wouldn't just declare it in our minds, but we declare it in our hearts, that every fiber in our being would declare how worthy of praise you are. Lord, thank you. Thank you that you are worthy. It is in Jesus' name we pray that this morning. Amen. Friends, would you join us this morning in singing how great is our God.
Heavenly Father, we do declare that you are great. We declare that we believe that you are great. This is, this is not just something that we're, we're seeing, uh, uh, well, this makes sense. We're saying it because we, we believe it. You're great. We believe it. So, Father, it is with that that we want to declare our belief to you this morning. Friends, would you join together on the screen and let us declare what we believe in the Apostles' Creed. Join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. I have to confess, I'm learning a lot of things with these masks on. Like if you sing, God, literally I want in your mouth. I'm also learning that when you're trying to communicate to somebody, you have to use your eyes a lot more. If you're laughing, you've got to kind of squint a little bit. People don't know you're laughing. Or if you're angry, you've got to give like an honest, like good stare, no blinking. Or, or if you just don't know, you've got to really get your eyes open to communicate your but we don't have any trouble in communicating to our Father this morning, friends, because He hears us with without mask. He hears us with or without speech. He knows the intentions of our hearts. But let's bring those to Him this morning. Would you join me? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to You because You are good, You are trustworthy, and You've proven this. For thousands of years, Your covenant love has never stopped. It is certain and sure. Lord, when we come to you, we come with absolute certainty. We don't come wondering, will he hear us this time or not? When we come to you, we don't come to a God who is waiting for an appeasement. Will they make a great enough offering worthy of my ear? The offering's been made. His name is Jesus. And so, Lord, we come to you with freedom and with joy gladness. Heavenly Father, would you hear now the prayers of your people? Lord, we lift up those who are traveling this week. We do pray for safety and protect them and bring them back home to us safely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Hmm. Yeah, Lord, we do pray that you would keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we give you the Moody family and their grief. Be close to them, please, Lord Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we do give you Cameron this morning, and we do pray your healing hand on her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers.
Lord, we do lift up to you those, once again, who are traveling, who are, whether it be holiday or whether it be for family who needs care. Um, but Lord, I do, I just resonate with that. Lord, those who are anxious right now, those who are struggling, Lord, that we would know that the battle belongs to the Lord, that this is yours, it too shall pass. Lord, we give this to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we do. We, we ask that you bless the cookout and that, Lord, we do give thanks for Jacob being here and just bless the work he's doing and especially in, in, in uncertain and difficult times, Lord. We're grateful and we just pray that you would bless everything that uh, he does within the walls of these churches, of this church, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we do give you the bud family, and we do ask for your peace and your healing power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we do on this Independence Day weekend, we do pray for healing in our country. And we do, we do ask that just in these times, you would reveal, we are not God. We are not you. We need you. And that you would just reveal that need deeper and deeper every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord Jesus, we do, I, I like that image, Lord, just, just pour the gospel even more into our cups. Um, let the flow go, go faster than usual and refill us as we seem to be depleted quickly. And Lord, we pray that that kingdom would come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we do lift up Megan's staff members, fellow staff members and patients, and uh, just the daily challenge of just trying to do their job and meet the needs of these folks in very extenuated circumstances. Lord, would you come into that and bring peace and bring wisdom and just bring comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, this week we got a letter from Christian Friends of Korea, and they're just very blessed by the gift that we've given them, and they want us to know that, but Lord, um, we want to hold them up to you and say, Lord, would you bless their work? It is harder than it's ever been, it would seem. Um, Lord, I pray that you would keep the doors open, that you would bless the people they are blessing, heal the people they are trying to heal, and Lord, create avenues 
um, for really what is the essence of their work, and that is the message of freedom in Jesus Christ. Lord, we also pray for those who are overseas right now, just trying to understand what it means to be faithful witnesses. Um, as multiple people have prayed this morning, Jesus, we ask that these times would not be times that render us useless, but that really render us invincible, uh, that the witness of what everybody's feeling right now would just reveal the need for something deeper, something more wonderful, something sustaining and eternal. Lord, help us to be deep witnesses of your gospel in Jesus Christ. Father, we continue to pray for our president. We pray for our senators and our congresspeople. We pray for the governors, all those who are tasked with decisions that we cannot imagine that have to get made. Lord, enter into that. Please enter into that. That's all, I think that's all we really know how to ask is just, would you enter into that? We don't know the right answers to pray for. We just know to ask you to enter into it. And Father, this Independence Day weekend, we just give a final thanks uh, for, for those who have, who have made enormous sacrifices with their lives for this country, um, whether it be time, energy, or even their actual lives. Um, Father, we just thank you, and we thank you that we live in a country where there are so many freedoms. It's hard not to just say thank you, Jesus, because we are extremely blessed in this country. Um, Father, so we say thank you. And we pray all this in the way you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, the peace of the Lord be with you all. I can't tell you how bad I want to just, uh, now get up and give each other a hug, or sh yeah, but we're not going to do that, we're not going to do that. <laughs> well, I'm going to dig into our, our scripture for this morning. I'm going to take off my, my face mask here. Carefully. And, uh, so you can hear me and see me. Um, past few weeks, we were doing a series um, in, with the I Am Statements, and finished that up last week, and so I was just asking the Lord, what are we supposed to do? Kind of wanted to be in the Old Testament, but wasn't really sure what to do, and uh, it, it, the Lord, I think the Lord revealed this to me, that it is in times like these that when you are a liturgical church, in other words, you follow the liturgical calendar, and you have those liturgical prayers, you have a lot of built-in resources for those seasons where things feel like they're, they're disoriented. And one of those is the lectionary. Lectionary are those scriptures that every day, every week, take you through the liturgical calendar. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at some of the lesser-known Old Testament texts. These are what you would call the alternate Old Testament texts in the lectionary, the alternate readings. Um, this does a couple things. One, it highlights some texts that we probably wouldn't ever look at because... Um, Typically, I do a whole series of Bibles, and so doing like a whole series through Isaiah would take a long time. However, the lectionary highlights some of these for us. Uh, another thing it's going to do is it's going to challenge me to look at some text I probably wouldn't look at <laughs> on my own accord. Um, but thirdly, is it grounds us in that rhythm of Scripture throughout the year. It just takes us through it. And it's, I, I've just really felt in times like these, those sacred rhythms are invaluable. And so this morning we're going to look at one that is, uh, you'll, you'll actually be familiar with it. It's a minor prophet. It's Zechariah. Um, we're familiar with this text because of Palm Sunday. However, it stands on its own two legs in real life. It's a great passage. And being Independence Day weekend, uh, the question I'm posing to us is, well, what does it mean to celebrate your Independence Day? Um, what does it mean to celebrate your freedom in Christ. And I don't mean just to remember it, I mean to celebrate it, to celebrate it. And to answer that, we're going to look at four verses, just four verses. So if you would, 
Uh, where if you brought your Bible, it's Zechariah 9, verses 9 through 12. We'll also put them up here on the screen. And I'm just going to ask that you'll leave them on the screen this morning because I'm going to reference them a couple times. Um, by the way, uh, Callan is, is dutifully doing our, our PowerPoints this morning, and so I just want to praise God that she's doing an excellent job. Thank you, Callan. Um, would you join me in reading Zechariah 9, verse 9? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous, and having salvation is he humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. And for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore you double. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, it's your word. We have expectations, grand expectations for your word to speak into our life. And so, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would come and fill this place, take this word and translate it to our hearts and our minds, what we need to see today. Jesus, be glorified in what we do. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, so I'm going to do something a little different today than what I typically do with scriptures. I'm actually going to walk through this text backwards. And I know what you're thinking. Polish guy walking backwards. This cannot be good. <laughs> um, but the reason I'm doing that is because, really, it starts with who we are, and it moves into focusing on Jesus, glorifying Jesus. And that's what this passage is really about. Um, it's, it's putting our, our hearts and minds on Jesus, celebrating him. So I'm just going to dive right into it. we got verse 12 up there, and it starts off with, Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Does, did that catch your attention when you read that, prisoners of hope? That just kind of not buoy you a little bit, like prisoners of hope. I, it doesn't sound positive, and yet it does sound positive. Uh, what is, what's up with that term, prisoners of hope? Well, by definition, uh, you know, anybody want to throw out a quick definition of what a prisoner is? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, held against their will, has no option, right? They may want freedom, but they can't save themselves at this point, correct? They don't have any freedoms. They don't have privileges. They don't have rights. They've surrendered those for whatever reason. Sometimes there's just imprisonment. Often in Scripture, we're seeing unjust imprisonment. And so these prisoners of hope are kind of in the unjust category. They don't have any hope, okay? It kind of reminds you of Romans 7. Paul says, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Those are great words of a prisoner. Why? Because he can't deliver himself, can he? He knows he's stuck. Who will deliver me? Because I can't save myself. A prisoner of hope is somebody who can say the very next line in that Romans 7 passage, which is, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The prisoner of hope is the opposite of the prisoner mentioned in verse 11, which is preceding this right here. It says, let me read it for us. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. All right, show of hands, who has ever been thrown into a waterless pit? Anybody? Anybody? Good. That's some pastoral counseling we will not have to tackle. Um, and it's probably a good thing because it's a fairly antiquated form of punishment. Since none of us have been thrown in said waterless pit, you can just imagine it with me. Uh, being in the middle of the desert, What's, what somebody would do, a capturer would do, is take their captive and they would throw them into this hot, deep pit that you cannot get out of. And of course, as mentioned, there is no water in said pit. 
There's a few other things that there is not. There's no food. There's no shelter from the sun. There's no rescue. You're stuck. It's not just death. It is a hopeless death. And that was the point of it. They were erasing you from time and space. They were taking you into the middle of this place where nobody would ever find you again, and you would die alone, slowly. Sounds very hopeful, doesn't it? So Zechariah, excuse me, not Zephaniah, Zechariah, uses this very image to describe everyone apart from God. You are in a waterless pit with no hope, zero hope. Can everybody hold up a zero this morning? Zero hope. We're going to say zero hope a few times. Zero hope. Life is nothing more than a slow and hopeless process towards death. You know, in this life, you can accomplish what you will. You can make of it what you want to. And if you don't make of it what you want to, it's okay. Don't worry. They all in the same way. You die. (laughs) The end. No exceptions. Zero hope. Unless someone else, that is, can enter in and save you. Right? Who will deliver me from this body of death? New Testament Christians, what's the answer? It's Jesus. Jesus enters into that space and saves us. When there was zero hope, when we had nothing to save ourselves, when literally just life looked like there was nothing, death. And how does he pull this off? Well, we're working backwards, as I said. Uh, Verse 10 shows Jesus entering into a very hopeless world. See, in a hopeless world, the world is at war with itself. Friends, that's our everyday existence. I mean, I don't know if you notice it, uh, and I'm not going to get, you know, too deep on that, but pretty much, you go read the news, you're going to see a world at war with itself. It's fighting for attention, or it's fighting for publicity, or it's fighting for wealth, it's fighting for something. It's fighting, 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 and if you can win... You get to preserve or continue your hopeless state a little bit longer. So what does Jesus do with a world that's at war with itself? He doesn't fight. He doesn't even need war, as a matter of fact. It's kind of wild. Instead, what he does is he... He's going to cut off the chariots. He's going to cut off the war horses. He's going to cut off the battle bow. And he's going to interject peace. Now, how does our scripture say he does that? Because it's an honest question. If he's not going to fight, how is he going to to do this? Because typically the only way you you beat people who want to fight is you got to fight them. Or at least show them you got a bigger gun, right? So how does he do it? What's verse 10 say? And he shall blank peace to the nations. He speaks. He speaks it. He doesn't fight it. He doesn't force it. He just speaks it. Now, when you think about it, that's not totally surprising because who is it that's speaking? The Word. Yes. The Word of God Himself. Are you surprised that when He comes in to defeat the powers of the world, all He has to do is speak. And yet that's what he does. He walks in and he speaks. And to me, you know, how does this work? Well, I believe that these are the kind of words that speak a truth so deep that it penetrates the soul of humanity and literally speaks in these words that are just, they they hit at a level that's so true. You don't have any other response. You know, why does every knee bow and tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord when this is all said and done? I think it's because the words he's going to speak are going to hit us at such a level, they will be irrefutable. People will just go, he's right. 
And everything in you will know it. He's right. It's almost like too much truth. It's just the power of truth. And you'll go, oh, he is everything my heart is longing for. He is everything I'm fighting for. He is everything I'm looking for. Why do I believe this? It's because this is the experience of just about everybody that follows Jesus as their Lord and Savior. At some point, you come into this place where you realize, I don't have what it takes. Your sin gets exposed for what it is. And you, and you come to this new understanding that if, if he's not it, then I, I'm lost. I can't do this on my own. And truth penetrates your life. And now you're sitting there going, what do I do with this? Well, you accept it. And you call it grace and mercy. This scripture is written in future tense, isn't it? He will come. Your king. Righteousness. Salvation. But we sit in here this morning on the other side of that, don't we? Actually, when we read this, we read it in past tense. Your king has come. He has come. Peace has been spoken into your life. Grace has been declared for you. It, once again, it's no longer in future. It's in present. And the reason I like working this text backwards is because it's taking you very, right to the response. What do you do when all of a sudden this was your life? You were in the pit. What's the only response you have? Well, it gives us three responses at the very top. Verse 9, the very first one. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. In other words, celebrate. Celebrate. Right? You know, for the 4th of July, we blow things up and we eat a lot of food. And that's a lot of fun, you know. But, but that's one day of the year. What is this talking about? This is talking about your life becoming a celebration. Christians, here's a question for you this morning. Is your life a celebration of Christ? Is your life a celebration of Christ and what he has done? I was in the pit. Death was inevitable. Zero hope. Until Jesus saved me. And so we, we celebrate with St. Peter when he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, listen to this, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope, not a zero hope, not a no hope, a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So we're called to celebrate, to rejoice. But then there's the next thing. Shout aloud. Anybody here ever been to a music concert? Oh, yeah, music concert. Anybody here ever been to a big music concert? Oh, yeah. Now, what if they, the artist hits that big final note and it's just boom, and they nail it, and the sound it just goes right into the crowd, and 100,000 people reply with, Woo! Does that describe our worship life? Jesus. I love the Psalms because they give us language of what this looks like. Make a joyful noise. Declare his greatness. Psalm 150. Praise him with loud and clashing cymbals. Do you ever feel like that at worship? Even here at Riceville, it's okay. You won't hurt my feelings. Or you just want to say, where's the cymbals? Where's the cymbals? Do you know who we're talking about? Where'd that bagpiper go? Bring her back here. We need some volume. Make a joyful noise. Shout aloud. 
Why do we do that? So that we can be whole. So that we can be whole. The cool thing about this word is it's not a verb as it's written. It's actually, it's kind of a, a function. It's not quite like a, a, a semicolon, but it's, it's a marker. And we translate it like behold or look or lo. <laughs> Your New King James. But actually what it is, it's a, a weird little thing called a demonstrative partic participle. And what it's telling you to do is whatever comes after this little behold or lo, it's saying whatever comes next, focus on that. It is the most important thing. Look here. Put all your attention right here. And what does it say? Behold your king. Behold your king. Focus on on your king. Pay attention to the king. Draw all your attention and focus right here to Jesus, who is righteous and has salvation. If you knew who you're talking about, there'd be symbols. Draw all your attention to him. Rebecca has this great story, and I asked her if I could steal it. And uh, she begrudgingly, I think, said yes, but she said yes. Uh, she was in Uganda on a mission trip, and there was a conference going on for pastors. And if you can imagine, pastors had been traveling by foot for hours earlier that day to get here. These, these, are, these are poor people. And they, they've come, they've gone through a whole day of training. You can imagine they are exhausted and fatigued. And they're getting ready for worship that evening, but it hadn't yet begun. As they're all sitting around, an older gentleman stands up and declares over the entire group, 2 Corinthians 3.17, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And I am free, so I will dance. And he starts clapping, and he starts singing, and he starts dancing. And before long, the room is breaking out and clapping and singing and dancing. And the worship service hasn't even started yet. But why? Because they know who they're singing about. They're rejoicing. They're shouting aloud. They're beholding. Riceville, your king has come. He loves you. And he saved you. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if you all remember the days you were in a pit, but I remember my days in the pit. Every once in a while, I still walk by and look into it and think, it wasn't a bad pit. Have my little exodus moment until I'm reminded of how good he is and how hopeless I was. Is your life a celebration of Christ? If I'm being honest, not often. So what do we do? We say, Spirit of God, reveal to our hearts how glorious and wonderful Jesus is. And where there are blocks in me from just celebrating from every ounce of my being, would you remove them? Would you remove them so that I could behold my King, that everything in me would be Christ? Friends, let me pray this over us this morning. Jesus, I would not dare ask a bunch of Presbyterians to stand up and start dancing. But what I would ask is that you would create in us hearts of worshipers. That you would take away the things that block us from just loving you and knowing you and celebrating what you've done. Lord, where this world keeps trying to convince us, now you're still in the pit. Jesus, shine light. Jesus, 
Help us to celebrate the true freedom we have in you. Help us to celebrate our Independence Day in you. Father, we know you love us. Help us to know it deeper every day. We want to be worshipers. We want to have a contagious faith that's just, it's just who we are. <laughs> Life looked like death to me. It's all I had to look forward to. And then he came. And I traded a life leading to death for a life leading to eternity. Praise you, Jesus Christ. We love you. Oh, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. It's in that name we pray. Amen. Friends, let's stand up. Let's, let us sing that very song. Let us re sing of our Redeemer's praise. We totally should have just sang that 10 times and I shouldn't have preached. That's, that's everything you needed to know right there. But would you receive the benediction? Oh. Go in the name of the one who has set the prisoners free of which you are. And if Christ has set you free, you are free indeed. So go and celebrate in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.